Joining me now from the Heritage Foundation is former Assistant Secretary of State Peter Brooks. Peter, uh, this is ugly. The world is watching. Yeah. And, and you got to wonder what, what Maduro must be thinking and what we must be trying to negotiate behind the scenes. P uh, play it out for us, please. Yeah, I mean, it's going to get bad tomorrow, Charles, potentially. Hopefully it won't. You have groups inside of Venezuela trying to clear a pathway to the border to get the aid that is being uh, stocked in places like Colombia and in Brazil. Maduro has closed air traffic to Curaçao, which is another route into, into uh, Venezuela. So tomorrow the tensions are certainly going to be high. Uh, this is an unnecessary tragedy, as you and I have spoken about many times. It's a crisis, and there could, there's a potential for more violence, which nobody wants to see. So Maduro must be thinking about what are my reputational costs if I crack down on these sort of things internationally, uh, because the world is going to be watching what happens tomorrow in Venezuela and on the borders of Venezuela. What are the wild cards here, Peter? Uh, apparently... Um a major diplomat from Venezuela has been in Moscow this week. Uh, um, uh, what, what can tilt this uh, one way or the other? Well, the, the real concern is violence, obviously. Um, the military are, are key players here. They haven't defected yet, although Chavez is former. He's the, he's the leader who preceded Maduro. His intelligence chief defected to Guaido. Uh, we could see more of that sort of thing. We do not want to see the Venezuelan military take actions tomorrow against aid workers on either side of the border. Right. That, could well, be a, that could be a tipping point. From what I've read, and I remember even during Chavez's time, where there were the extraordinary pay raises always from the military and sometimes oh, yeah. the police, that practice carried on with Maduro. But apparently the rank and file, they're just your average soldier there, also not faring pretty well economically as well. So, you know, they're watching the generals line their pockets, and then right. they're going to be asked to harm their fellow citizens. Couldn't right. that be the breaking point where people say, no, we've drawn a line? Absolutely. And we don't want the Venezuelan military to do that, and we should be speaking about this, and there should be getting a lot of international attention. The enlisted and the junior officers are not doing as well as the 2,000-plus general officers in the Venezuelan military. Charles, we only have like 650 general officers in the U.S. military. You know how big and powerful that is. In Venezuela, there's more than 2,000. Uh, Chavez did this to try to placate them and mollify them and get them to join his ranks years ago. Maduro has continued that process. They're in charge of food distribution. They're involved in energy production. Uh, they're doing pretty well. So right. they're really worried about if they fall, what happens to them? Uh, what happens to their livelihood? What happens to them? Would they be prosecuted? So this is a very tense situation. Uh, and, and quickly, we just have a minute, but yeah. um, there have been reports of Maduro sending gold uh, to different countries, perhaps, uh, you know, moving money around, whatever he could. Is there a chance that there could be a negotiated settlement uh, put together that allows him to leave Venezuela uh, and, and wherever he's hidden in money and stolen money, let him go reunite with us somewhere else? And, and, and could that be sort of the way this could play out? Well, that's a possibility that he could be given exile in a country such as China, Russia. Uh, there's right. other places. Cuba is probably high, high on that list. Of course, we don't want him to have the Venezuelan people's of money, Charles. Not. Of course not. And we don't not. want him to get away with anything in terms of crimes that right. he's committed. Uh, but but the as, fact an alternative, is, is that, as an alternative to violence, that's all I was saying. Yes, Peter, I, yes, exactly. Peaceful transition to, a, to a free and fair elections under an interim government is what we want. We've got to leave it right there, Peter. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And coming up